Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today we've got an interesting match, a pro all that glitters match. This is a very, very big map, all that glitters version 1.2, huge amount of metal as well, with a bunch of extremely high true skill players. This is a 22, 23 plus true skill lobby, as you can see up here. And uh, we are, well, let's just say that this is a rare occurrence. A lot of the the higher skill players really hate this map because of, well, it ends up turning into a big slog almost all the time, but it should be fun to watch these guys develop their front lines and see what interesting strategies they go for. We're, we're certainly within the realm of skill here where these guys can have some builds that can be truly efficient and, and put out a lot of firepower very quickly. So I'm excited to see what's gonna come out. So, Flash, Starting out, Bot Labs, you'll probably recognize Fat Flash, one of the fan favorites. There's a lot of fan favorites in this game, Kevin, also as well. Free Yep. Hey, <laughs> there, there's a, a, a player named Yep that uh, I, I guess must have been banned or something, and there's a movement to free him. Blahage, I haven't seen this player, but he does have a really high true skill. Either a new player with an uncertain true skill or a secret pro. Excited to see what he goes for. We've got a bot start for almost everyone down here. It's like, yeah, bot lab there, bot lab there, bot lab for forever. Bot lab for repent, another name you'll probably recognize. Bot lab for Nubosa book. Love that name. Very, very fun on the tongue. Ah, we've got a vehicle lab. The first one of the first one of the evening. We've got a vehicle lab out for Ego Chan. Do we have any else? Skag looks like he's planning to go vehicles as well. And Tizarin, Tizarin, Zarin. Very, very hard for me to say with my American accent, but Zarin looks like he's going to be uh, starting bots as well. His name sort of reminds me of, of Terran from StarCraft, but also of Terrazine, which is also from StarCraft, but it's, it's a drug. So, you know, don't do drugs, kids, I suppose. Now we do have some early harassment coming out from Flash, very well known for his microcontrol. Should be interesting to see that. We also see Free Yep sending out some ticks to harass very early on. Of course, if you all watch my videos, and I know that you watch every one of my videos, <laughs> you you know that uh, I'm a, a big fan of the early tech harassment. I think it I think it plays a really important role. So far, Flash getting the upper hand with these ticks here, and Decat is forced to recall his tick as a defensive measure. He does pump out a single pawn, which will dissuade any of these techs from harassing him too heavily, but one of them does sneak through and is going to go harass some of the players back here. We do see Deltars, who's another name that you'll probably recognize. This pawn gets mopped up by a grunt. I'd like to see that. See the tick coming out here, but it looks like it's going to be intercepted by friendly techs. Not before shutting down another mech, though. It's a little bit of metal down the drain. There's so much metal on this map. Oh, and I'm missing it. There is a tick harassment that's been a bit more successful from Free Yep over here. Looks like this one wasn't wasn't caught, and he's just running around and shutting down all these solar panels. So there's very, excuse me, very very little energy production actually on the line for this player here, Zarin. That's a nice little bit of micro shutting down a lane that is already at a disadvantage, going to be pressing the advantage quite readily themselves. That looks like Free App is getting ready to move out, although not quite yet. Still wants to set up a construction turret in his base. It's a good idea. Get that build power up early while well, you still can. What are the build orders we're seeing from other players coming out here? Lahaj looks like he's going for... Well, he's already built as many construction workers as he's going to make. Looks like he's going to eat up some of those metal-rich solar panels. Get back that 150 metal. Always a good idea to eat those up and sub them out for a more metal efficient energy collection method. Do a little bit of a skirmish here between some pawns and some grunts. Very nice, Kevin holding his own, making sure the front line isn't broken. Flash expanding in a, a very wide arc, which means that his expansion is a little bit slower, but that does mean that he's gonna have a tremendous metal advantage here once he finally gets some units pushed up to the front and a front line does end up getting developed. Nubosabak has pushed up to the front as well. He's building light laser turrets all over the place. A good idea because this this entire lane, of course, on all the glitters, is extremely vulnerable to tech harassment. 
Now we do see more and more ticks coming around here, but there is a light laser turret which will be more than enough to mop up those ticks. Duzerine eventually making it to the front lines, not having too big of an issue getting the security of that lane. Now it's really important that on these side lanes here, this one up top on the top left and this one on the bottom right, that these two players work together and the person in the back doesn't just hard tech right out the right out the gate. It's it's pretty important because there's a a lesser amount of metal on this lane for the people in this this I guess valley area than the people outside of it, right? So these these people on the the far left hand side, uh, the bottom left hand side, and the top right hand side are going to have an easier time because there's way more metal extractors that they're going to be able to claim. Which means that when you're playing in this little area down here, you need to be extra efficient with your units. Definitely don't run them into light laser turrets whenever you can help it. Repent asking for a radar tower. It's always a good idea. Help measure the strength of your opponent. And you can see the battle line is pretty neatly drawn right down the middle of this map. And that's almost exactly what I would expect from all these, these really high skill players being able to put up these these really efficient lines of defense here. You see a little bit of aggression coming out here with some flashes. Firmament doesn't have enough energy to degen, so they are going to break through without being taken down. They're getting scuffed by all this T1 defense, though, and eventually these pawns are going to put in enough damage to bring down most of them. One of them makes it through. Going to get a max for his troubles. That's always nice. Maybe two? Eh, he does find the extra maxes poking at the holes in the defense. I do like to see that. Slowly making towards Free Yap's base. It's going to be very difficult to hit it with that rocket bot. Oh, but he lands. Oh, two hits. Wow, very nice. We do see a commander going down. It looks like the plan is to tech here for the uh, the, the neon green player, Blahage. Already starting up that tier 2 bot lab. He's very low on metal, so this is going to be really important to eat up this commander and turn it into that bot lab. He's got tons of solar pen, or rather, uh, wind turbines coming up and energy converters as well. Repent with quite a bit of energy storage. It's sort of interesting. We do have another commander going down. And it looks like we do have a bombing run coming out here. I do like to see that. Looks like Forever is going to start pumping out a few of these Cortex Bombers. As well as some Fighters and Finches. Going to be good to scout ahead of his bombing. Of course, it's a, always a good idea. He is a little late to the build power though, but he is getting it up and running, so it's going to be nice to... Oh no, those are construction turrets, sorry. I thought those were, um, I thought those were Tech 1 constructors, but they are already turrets, so never mind that. He does have the build power. Looking good in that case then. And we do have a Twin Guard up here, which is enough to push back Rocket Bots for the most part. It does outrange them. As you can see, its range is 480, whereas the rocket bots is 475, so it just barely outranges them, but it does outrange them nonetheless. Now the front lines here are just becoming more and more static. We do see the addition of a few twin guards over here as well to outrange some of these light laser turrets. Always a nice idea. They've walled off this area so that they can't push through. I would love to see another wall by Nubo, Nubo, Nubosobook. Nubosobook? I'm going to call him Nubo just to ensure that they don't tear down this wall in order to push him. It's just as just as advantageous as it would be for him to push through there, it would be for them to push through to him. Now we do see Light Repent eventually teching upwards, which is the right move. He should tech upwards and, and of course give a T2, T2 constructor to his teammate Nubo. His, his backline here, or in fact all of the backline here, should basically be supplying T2 constructors to all of the front line as they're going to be constantly fighting. So. You're not really looking to sell on this map, you're, you're more so just looking to give away because there's so much metal and also your your front line is so constantly harassed. Now, the cat under a lot of firepower here, actually at risk of losing his commander, he does manage to keep it up, but it costs him the heavy laser turret. Flash pushing pretty forward with his, his tanks here, his tanks and his artillery. I don't hate it though, I think it's a good play. We see a few beamer turrets working on burning down some of these tanks. Not a bad idea. Flash actually sneakily securing this hidden metal extractor. I do like that. It's kind of cute. Don't see those all too often, but when we do, they're always nice. We have some artillery harassing these units, but not really... Well, I guess it is whittling them down slowly. Any, any free hit you can get with artillery is worth taking. Oh, and the bombing run. Taking out a lot of Flash's economy. Really like to see that. 
a lot of a lot of wind economy on this map, so you really can do quite a lot of damage. Looks like they're going for the factory, actually. Interesting. Is it going to be enough? It looks like oh, with this last bomb. Oh, they don't go for the factory. Actually, they go for the they go for the metal converters, the energy converters instead. And that factory survives with 16 health. Oh, but a bomber crashes on one of the energy converters and takes out some more windmills. Can't ask for a more efficient crash than that. Flash asking for that T2 constructor from one of his teammates, and he does get it. It's good to see. And now Flash is going to be in the process of rebuilding for a little while, but that's not really going to stop him. He's already got a forward base to pump out these vehicles up towards the front here. So he's not really going to be at a terrible disadvantage, just going to be slightly slower in terms of metal production. But he's pushing the front line so that the enemy has to rebuild their forces and can't counterattack into him quite as easily, which is quite a nice strategy. He's also got a lot of these resbots bringing back any of these units and effectively allowing him to stall even longer. Even though it's costing him almost all of his energy. I do like that strategy. I think it's quite nice. Especially with these tanks, which can survive for quite a while. Very, very efficient resurrection. Purple, holding his own. Does look like his light laser turrets and medium laser turrets have gone down. The beamers. We do see a little bit of harassment here by pawns. Pushing into stouts. Not great against stouts in a head-on battle, but if you can surround them, they do enough damage to take them down. Looks like a commander went down here. That's going to be... Whose commander is that? Light blue? Is that Decat? Or Nubo? Looks like Decat. Decat's commander going down. And it looks like Flash is trying to get the... Uh, trying to get the resurrection there. Or rather the reclaim there. But his bots do get taken out by a push of pawns. Now that sucks that he lost all of his pawns there. But it's definitely going to be worth it. Because it means that nobody's going to be able to reclaim that metal. At least for a minute here. We do see the construction worker coming in. Just any... any any constructor they can find, they're going to send in there because it's a nice boost in metal to get them started. Quite a few light laser turrets coming out here. I guess I really like to see that. It, it, it is going to stop I mean, basically any push, anything short of a, a full-on artillery siege or something of the like. Now this is devastating. Flash finds an entrance, pushes through the front line, making a huge play with these. Not even thinking about teching, it's not even worth it at this point. He's just pumping out more and more of these stouts, these medium tanks. And he manages to completely wipe away Decat, just taking away his entire base from him. Decat, with just a handful of constructors left to his name, retreating to the safety of his teammates. We have a few paralyzers coming out in, in desperation. This is always a desperation move, but will they be enough? I don't think so. These tanks are awfully resistant against this paralysis, and there's also plenty of units on the back of this as well as some anti-aircraft. And we do see these 2-2 sprinters, which are not terrible against stouts. They're, they're not quick to destroy them, but they are hard to kill. Rather, the, the stouts have a hard time killing the sprinters. So, not a not a terrible play, especially with these paralyzers in mind. But just going to take quite a while to mop up. A time that they don't really have with this push being made in the center here. That is a huge path that has been cleaved through the blue team here. You can see Flash just taking advantage of it as, as well as he can. Now I have to give props to the right hand side for holding up their own, but also this top left hand side as well for holding their lane against the push from these two other players. Looks like mostly working on getting that T2 economy up. We do see a fusion reactor being built here by Free Yep. It looks like on the right hand side, we do have advanced metal extractors, but we don't have an advanced fusion yet, or rather a irregular fusion yet. Still working on getting those advanced metal extractors up for Nubo. Which does mean that he's going to be spending a lot more metal on those those buildings, those extractors, than actual units. Which is going to be quite a pain. We do see a lot of paralyzed stuff here. A lot of paralyzed... Uh, what are those? Flashes? Blitzes? Flashes the player. Blitzes the tank. And they're going to get mopped up. And eventually, this is going to get cleaned up. Now, they... Decat did save a bunch of construction construction craft, so he does have the opportunity here to get back in this game, but he's definitely going to be down for quite a while. With a with a handful of tier 1 constructors, he's going to be severely limited on what he can and cannot build. At least for the time being. Down on build power and doesn't even have a metal extractor to his name. Starting to get one up as quickly as he can. Having to scalvage the corpses of the 
the, the infantry that ruined his base in order to pay for the metal extractor to restart his civilization. Quite a brutal thing to happen, but it does happen from here to here. And we do have some stouts pushing through as well. It looks like the medium tanks are just too much for this team to handle. Teching up just a little too quickly and they don't have the units to push back these two or three, well five medium tanks. Medium tanks getting a lot of hits on the T2 constructor. If it goes down, yeah, that's going to be a pain. You do see hounds out, which are a good counter, but they still take a while to take down these tanks. I mean, the tanks, believe it or not, they're a bit tanky, <laughs> and they have a they have a lot of health. Boy, was that a sentence! I'm sure, you all enjoyed that one. Oh, we have commanders dropping left and right. Free Eps commander going down, as well as who was that in there? Green firmament. We have firmament and free Eps commanders both going down. We see these T2 units coming up finally. And they're going to be able to hold the front line, but that's a lot of ground to give up just to uh, just to get those T2 units out. Was the tech change really worth it? I don't know. Now we have Nubo slowly being overwhelmed, it looks like. These T1 tanks are whittling away at these defenses. The heavy laser turret is gone. He's basically down to light laser turrets and a few of his own units. Not a tr tremendous defense. We do have a grave robber coming in here as well to eat up all that delicious metal. Take a look here. That's almost almost 1,500 metal just laying on the ground in units there. We have a commando over here. That's kind of interesting. Does get paralyzed, luckily for them. But an interesting play, nonetheless. I do love to see those commandos because they're so rarely used, and I honestly would love to see more of them. Oh, we do see a nuke coming out here. Oh, right in the heart of this team. That sucks. That is a that is a blow to your heart right there. That is a, a pain in the chest. And indeed, he just taps out, gives up. Doesn't doesn't want to deal with the repercussions of that. And uh, obviously, obviously that that one hurts, right? It's hard to it's hard to take that hit and not just want to quit the game immediately. A little, little bit of rage coming out there. I don't blame him because I've been there and I've done that, but uh, you know, always, always try and stick through to the end whenever you can, whenever you can stand it. Take a deep breath and just start rebuilding one at a time. Your teammates have the the T2 constructors, you know, you they, they can lend you some power, solar panel, so, solar panels or fusion reactors, whatever it is. They'll help you get in the game at least if they're you know they're good good teammates. They will anyway. We do see Anti-Nuke come up right away, of course. <laughs> Not going to be seeing that again, except that they might have another nuke charged. Let's find where that nuke came from, in fact. It looks like right over here. Uh, it was an Armageddon nuke launcher, so... Or rather, a... Uh, a... Uh, Cortex nuclear launcher. Nuclear... I was saying nuclear. Nuclear launcher. Which does mean that it is going to recharge quite a bit slower. Now, it looks like Kevin is lagging quite a bit. Over here it is. Command delay. Uh, it looks like he's okay. Should be resuming very momentarily. I do like seeing all the dots move around. Like cockroaches in the night. <laughs> what a fortified position Kevin has built up here. He's got energy converters next to next to construction turrets, next to light laser turrets. Just a crazy base that he's built up at the front here. His, his back line isn't really even anything. It's just a bunch of metal extractors. On one hand, it's nice because his units are going to come out extremely quickly. On the other hand, it can also cost him a lot. And we do see some fighters coming out here, making a push to break the air screen that does not exist. Light anti-air turrets and, and units taking down some of these fighters, but a lot of them make it through and are going to be enough to harass down all the fighters on the blue team. What a smackdown. We see a bunch of fiends coming out. Free, yep, well aware of the incredible power of the Fiend. Where's he producing this from? I'm guessing it's a Twitcher somewhere. Or he was given them. I wonder. Either way, he knows that those can stop most of those T1 units, especially in combination with those Hounds. The Hounds can lob away at those units from far away, but the, the Fiends are going to be able to put out the DPS up close and personal, and especially in an AoE. Very powerful. We do have Deltars going for a advanced uh, advanced fusion reactor. Forgetting all the forgetting all the the buildings today. Running out of my words. 
used up all my words and now I don't have any left. Huge patch of Lazarus as well, getting caught here by Flash's tanks, but he does decide to retreat. Free up now with a couple of snipers out, which are nice because they're extremely efficient. Every You, you essentially know that every time they shoot, they're going to get a kill. I do love to see that. We also have some shenanigans going on up here. We have some persecutors being built up on this ridge line. Very powerful. As well as a radar, and I'm sure there will be more. The jammer, all sorts of stuff. These persecutors are going to be super aggressive to this area. You can see just how far this range is. All of these units are going to be in trouble. We do have the response, though. The recluses starting to make their way in that direction. Will they be able to make it to the persecutors without being torn apart by them, though? I don't know. There's a lot of rockets, and they see them now. Yep, those persecutors landing some heavy hits. Those recluses are not particularly strong. They're, they're not a very tanky unit. They're going to be torn down pretty brutally by all this artillery fire. And it looks like, for the most part, these recluses are going to be dealt with. A good attempt. The, the right response for the terrain disadvantage, but unfortunately just not enough and too much coordination from the enemy team. See this huge bombing run coming out here now. Taking out the anti-nuke. Oh, that's going to be huge. You can see the play already. Has he launched a nuke already? There it goes. The nuke is targeting right in the middle of this base. You saw the anti-nuke come down. This is going to hurt Repent real bad. See these bombers still being reused. Trying to blow up this fusion reactor, but there's enough, there's enough uh, build power to keep it repaired up while it's being bombed. Repaired and bombed at the same time. Here we see the nuke coming down. Ooh, and there it all goes. That hurts pretty bad. If you're repent right now, they're looking at that, and it's pretty hard to stay in this game. We do see some more people tapping out of this game. Looks like, uh, who was that? Decat has also tapped out as well. I don't blame him. He was able to restart a little bit, but not enough to keep up the pace of the ever-growing push against them here. And it looks like, indeed, they are going to call the resign vote. Looks like they know when they're beat, and they're going to try and get their team to coordinate and resign. Being said, looks like they are waiting to fight to the very last, hoping that there's some miracle solution, but unfortunately they've lost most of their back line. Their player back here has given up, so no longer under control. Free up, still fighting as hard as he can, but there's just not enough. Too many grunts swarming in, too many Sheldons blowing up everything at such a huge distance. We've got grunts swarming in every direction. Every metal extractor they have is at risk now. And the armada, or rather the uh, the, the northern tide is splashing and, and crashing against them. I almost said the armada tide, but a lot of this is Cortex. You see all these fiends and Sheldons and whatnot. Look at those Sheldons tearing apart those units. This is, this is what I mean. When you when you get enough of these in big enough numbers, they really just become devastating. They can start to almost one hit a lot of these uh, a lot of these units, and it can be it can be really really unfortunate. Another nuke comes down and blows up that base, removing that player essentially from the game. Repent, not willing to resign though. Not not going to individually resign anyway. He did call the vote to team resign. Ah, uh, there he goes. I was wondering. He he wasn't doing anything, so I was wondering if he was just waiting. Or what the idea was. Anyway, we do see sort of the the push inevitably crashing against them, like a like a zombie horde rushing against the enemies here. You can see the southern friends, the battle pals, are trying to hold their own, but they they just don't have the numbers or the eco to keep up the the army to contest all this. A lot of bombers trying to blow up this advanced fusion reactor. Those, uh, those Stormbringers are really inefficient at blowing up advanced fusion reactors, though, unfortunately. Because their bombs are so spread out. You only, you only end up landing maybe two or three of the bombs on the actual fusion reactor where you mean to. Which is pretty unfortunate. Switching targets here to the Anti-Nuke, which is a good idea. And Free Up now, holding the entire map in his fingertips, just controlling it all. Deltars technically has not resigned either, but... Free yeah, up, owns everything, owning the map, and he finally decides to resign. 
what a what a clash of massive armies here but you can see the the push from flash was just enough to deal the the balance tipping amount of damage and if we look at these graphs you can see a pretty even growth from this whole team they really all expanded and, and pushed evenly here and you can see that the the enemy team their enemy team the blue team was unable to keep up with that growth and just slowly got outscaled outscaled and eventually the numbers were just too much Thank you all very much for watching. That was an exciting game. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked and want to see more. I try to post daily a lot of bar content, and we've got some other stuff coming out too. Check out some of the tutorials if you'd like to know how these players play and how I play more specifically. <laughs> um, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.